Hey guys, Riley here with Dark Arrow. Today I'm going to be giving a high level overview of the different types of carbon fiber and fiberglass cloth used in the Dark Arrow 1 kit. In general, all the structures in the Dark Arrow 1 airframe start out as a cloth, which gets combined with an epoxy resin to form a hard composite structure. Depending on what we're trying to build in the aircraft, we need to select the right cloth for the application. There are a number of variables that feed into the selection process, but the biggest two are the strength properties of the cloth and the manufacturing properties of the cloth. There's six types of carbon fiber we use and two types of fiberglass. Let's talk through them. The first cloth type that I want to show is this spread toe plain weave carbon fiber cloth. So we use a lot of this in the airframe of the Dark Arrow 1. You can see it in basically all the skins on the wings, fuselage, vertical stabilizer, and horizontal stabilizer. And it's really good for structures that don't have a lot of curvature to them. This cloth has good strength properties in multiple directions because it has an even balance of fibers running at zero degrees and 90 degrees relative to the weave pattern. We stack up a bunch of layers or laminations of this cloth at different orientations to create structures like the fuselage skin or the wing skin. And you'll notice the weave pattern on this cloth is a very large fiber bundles that are flat. And so that helps keep that laminate stack very thin and compressed, which helps reduce buildup of excess resin in the structure, which would increase weight unnecessarily. So we really like this cloth and we would use it everywhere in the airframe if we could uh, because it produces such light, strong structures, but it's not very well suited for uh, parts that have compound curves like the cowling or the wing fillets. So in those applications, we have to use a different type of cloth weave. For parts that have a lot of curvature, like the cowling or the wing fillets, we have to use a different weave pattern, which is this 2x2 two two twill weave. So this is a really common weave pattern you'll see, and I think this is what most people think of when they hear carbon fiber. You'll see this in like trim automotive parts or maybe a carbon fiber laptop case. But the great thing about this weave type is that it's very drapeable and conformable to complicated shapes. And that's made possible specifically by the weave pattern. So you can see this cloth can stretch and conform and distort to whatever shape you're trying to create. The only drawback with this is that it uses smaller fiber bundles that are round and they don't pack as tightly and lay as flat as the spread toe carbon. So the disadvantage there is that uh, it doesn't lay as flat in the laminate stack so that allows it to pick up a little bit more resin giving you a little bit worse fiber to resin ratio and a little bit heavier part. So we try to limit the amount that we use this in the aircraft. There's a variation on the twill weave we use in which the cloth is woven into a cylindrical sleeve. We only use that on one part in the aircraft, which is this spinner. So the advantage of having it woven into a sleeve is that there are no axial seams in the cloth. This keeps the weight and strength evenly distributed around the circumference of this part. If this part did have an axial seam on it, that could create a heavy spot on the part. And since this part rotates with the prop shaft, that heavy spot could cause an imbalance, which would lead to vibration. And we want to minimize any vibration with the propeller and engine. So that's why we use a sleeve with no seams. Some of the parts of the aircraft, like the wings, horizontal stabilizer, and vertical stabilizer require additional reinforcement to withstand the aerodynamic loads they experience. So in those parts, we add additional layers of this unidirectional cloth to help handle those flight loads. This cloth is very strong in only one direction since it basically has 100% of the fibers all oriented in one direction. So it's very strong in the fiber direction and then it has minimal or zero strength perpendicular to that. So we align this cloth with the stresses in the part. So I'll use the wing as an example. The lifting loads on the wing try to bend the wing upwards, which produces internal stresses in the wing that are aligned with the wingspan direction. We add in extra layers of this unidirectional cloth into the wing skins and we align it with those stress directions and that helps strengthen and stiffen the wing against bending. For certain parts in the aircraft, like brackets and bell cranks and hard points, we machine them out of a solid billet of carbon fiber. And we make that billet from this thick multi-axial fabric. This cloth has fiber bundles running in a bunch of different directions. So it's running at zero, 90, and plus and minus 45 degrees relative to the length of the cloth and it's very thick. The advantage of having it very thick is that you can build up a thick billet of material without having to cut a ton of layers of cloth. When you stack up enough layers of this cloth in a billet, the material properties in different directions start to average out, and that allows us to create a generic billet of material that we can use to machine out different brackets and bell cranks, whatever we wanna make. The last type of carbon fiber used in the Dark Air One airframe isn't really a weave at all, but I still wanna explain it, and it's the 
filament wound carbon fiber tubes we use in the control system. So these are manufactured by winding a resin impregnated fiber bundle around a cylindrical mandrel and then allowing it to cure. And the fiber bundle winding angle is varied while it's wound onto the mandrel. That gives the tube strength in different loading conditions. So whether it's tension or compression or bending or twisting, the tube is well suited for the loading condition. So that's all the carbon fiber types we use in the airframe. Let's check out the fiberglass types now. We don't use a lot of fiberglass in the Dark Air 1 airframe, but there is some. You'll notice the structure behind me on top of the fuselage, the canopy fairing, that's made out of fiberglass. This is the raw form of the fiberglass cloth, and this is before we form it into the final structure. The reason we selected fiberglass on the canopy fairing is because we want to house a number of the antennas for the aircraft in the canopy fairing. Fiberglass is transparent to radio waves, so basically the antennas can see out. Keeping the antennas internal is good for aerodynamics because basically they're not hanging out in the breeze and causing excess drag. When we were selecting the cloth type for the canopy fairing, the main thing we were looking at is the manufacturing property. So it has a number of compound curves, so we had to select a cloth that's drapeable and conformable. So we picked this 2 by 2 twill weave for that structure. The nice thing about fiberglass is that it's relatively inexpensive. It might be nice to use fiberglass more in the airframe of the Dark Arrow 1, but it's not nearly as light as carbon fiber and it's not nearly as stiff. So that's the first type of fiberglass we use. Let's check out the second. The second type of fiberglass we use in the airframe is this thin, light fiberglass weave. So this primarily gets used to prevent galvanic corrosion. Uh, there's a phenomenon that can occur between conductive metal alloys and uh, carbon fiber where the conductive alloy corrodes. You can prevent it by electrically isolating the alloy from the carbon fiber, so that's what we use this weave for. So we use this in the uh, carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb panels. We put a layer of this in between the aluminum honeycomb core and the carbon fiber skin, and then we use it in some other areas of the aircraft where aluminum alloy might otherwise touch the carbon fiber structure. So that's where we use the second type of fiberglass. So those are the different cloth weave types used in the Dark Air 1 airframe. Hopefully you learned something and maybe now when you look at the airframe structures, you'll have a different perspective on what you're seeing. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.